All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Hunter Reed. I'm the Sports Information. I want to tell you how pleased we are that you've joined us here today in this nice, uh, warm South Carolina weather, otherwise known as baseball weather. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you on campus, and uh, for, especially for this exciting day in the history of Furman Athletics and Furman Baseball. At this time, I'd like to call on Furman Director of Athletics, Mike Buddy. Thank you, Hunter. Thank you, everybody, for being here this afternoon. Um, certainly want to thank some of our student athletes who took the time to come over. Um, anytime that there's a, a transition in coaching, uh, it's a anxious time for student athletes. They're always worried about who their new chief is going to be. Um, this group was extremely patient uh, during a, a three-week whirlwind period, so we appreciate them uh, sitting tight and seeing where this adventure took us. So uh, this is a great opportunity. As an athletic director, hiring uh, coaches is one of the most important things that, that I believe we do. Uh, there is no one who has more day-to-day -day interaction with these student athletes than the coaches. Uh, it starts when they recruit them in high school. They know these student athletes better than anyone. Uh, and so they, that impact that they have on student athletes can lead that student athlete to have a great experience in their four years at Furman, or it could be a miserable four years at Furman. And so um, we certainly take it very seriously. Um, we were thrilled to have such a great family atmosphere during the interview process. Uh, we had about 15 people in our department help out. Um, during the search, we developed a profile of the ideal candidate. Uh, I specifically came up with so many bullet points for the ideal candidate that I would know that no one would be able to check all those boxes. Uh, but I wanted to truly identify the ideal candidate. And I put that list together um, with a lot of our current coaches in mind. You know, we sat down with, with Ken Pettis and Clint Hill and a few of us, and we basically said, what makes our successful coaches successful? What qualities do they possess? What experience have they had in their background that leads us to believe that they are going to be successful fits? And the longer the list became and the deeper the candidate uh, pool became, uh, the more Brett Harker's name and face kept popping into my mind. Um, to be honest, nothing personal. I, I kept trying to talk myself out of it. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're being thorough in these positions. Having known Brett personally, um, I was trying to separate the emotion from the intellect, uh, but at the end of the day, the emotion and the intellect led me to the obvious decision that Brett Harker would be the right fit. Having had about 25 years of collegiate baseball experience as both a player and an administrator, my network is pretty deep. And the more people that I called to ask about any particular candidate, um, I heard several things over and over. And what I heard was, Whatever's going on at Furman, the last two or three years, they're getting a different level of recruit. So some ACC coaches said, I've never recruited against Furman until the last couple of years. Obviously, a couple of years ago is when Brett Harker joined the staff. And so there were signs everywhere that led me to believe that this program was on an upward trajectory, um, in large part because of Coach Harker and, and Coach Harbin. Uh, and so at the end of the day, the decision became an easy one. If that's your agent calling right now, I swear. <laughs> I told him not to. So again, there's no doubt that Brett Harker is the right person in the right place to lead this program. Uh, as I was reading some historical perspective, I, I came across an interesting quote from another AD uh, about eight years ago. The quote was, there was no eureka moment where I knew. This is just a young man with special qualities, intangible qualities that you're either born with or you're not. The quote was from Terry Don Phillips as he was announcing Dabo Swinney to be the head football coach at Clemson, whom literally not many people had heard of at the time. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Tiffany and Emma, the better part of Brett Harker, our new head baseball coach. He's a local kid, Hillcrest High School, accomplished All-American pitcher at the College of Charleston, great professional career, He's a great man, he's a father, he's a son, he's a husband. He attacks every day with unbelievable energy and passion. And I'm proud to say, he is our new head baseball coach. Yeah, yeah. 
So I, I thought it would be more it would be more appropriate instead of giving the shiny brand new Furman hat. I thought we'd give him the one that we pulled out of his locker this morning. <laughs> Because it shows the hard work and sweat that he put into this to get to this point, we'll save that for you for later. Congratulations, Thank you. Mike. Thank you. I told Mike there was no way I was putting on that hat and messing up the hair I had going today. <laughs> so, guys, I thank you so much for being here. Um, gosh, I think back on this last 24 hours, and it has just been a whirlwind. Um, <laughs> All the love and support that we've received has just been nothing short but humbling. We, me and my wife and, and Emma feel so blessed to, to be standing here. Um, as he said, I'm born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina. So for me to be standing in front of you guys with Paris Mountain in the background and that beautiful Diamond F behind me, it's a dream come true. And I, and I truly mean that. Um, the passion that I have for this university and this city, it can only be formed over a lifetime. And that's why what makes this day so special for me. Um, obviously, I want to thank President Davis and, and Mike Buddy for this opportunity. Most of all, more than anything, just believing in me. And I, and I told you, um, people that believe in me, I don't let them down. It's just not in my DNA, and I, and I promise that to you. Um, obviously, I want to thank my gorgeous wife, Tiffany. I'm not going to cry when I say this. And my beautiful daughter, Emma, um, without their support, and, and love, there's no way I'd be standing here. Um, it's surreal to think that this girl, beautiful woman standing next to me as I'm introduced as the head coach at Furman University is the same girl that I danced with at our high school prom at Timmins Arena several years ago. <laughs> it's incredible how, the, how, how life works like that. Um, but just I w there's no way I'd be where I'm at w without them supporting me every day. So there are so many coaches to thank along this path. A um, couple in particular, I want to thank my high school coach at Hillcrest High School, David Davenport. He was always there for me and kind of gave me my shot right out of the gate. And then one of my biggest impacts is Scott Foxhall, my pitching coach at the College of Charleston, who is now at NC State. The guy's been a father figure to me since I was 18 years old. He's the guy I could call on at any time. And honestly, he's helped mold me into the coach and the person that I am today, and this is why I'm having this opportunity. So thank you so much, um, Coach Foxhall. Um, I want to thank Ron Smith um, for what he did for me, giving me my chance, my first shot at Division I baseball, what he's done for this program, this university. I could stand up here for hours. There's no way that anybody could ever thank him for what he's done for this university. Um, to the alumni, many of you I played against at my years at College of Charleston, and you guys never let me live down that although I was on the most successful team in College of Charleston hist in uh, SOCON history, you still beat us in the SOCON tournament in 2005. I hear that about every day from those guys. I can live with that, right? I got the diamond F on my heart now too. But the solid foundation that the alumni has laid throughout these years, the sacrifices that they've made, um, all the hard work, sweat and tears have laid that solid foundation that we can build up on. Um, if they haven't put in those years of hard work, there's no way that we can build up and reach the, reach the lofty aspirations that we're looking to reach as a program. Um, I can't thank the alumni enough, and I'm looking forward to getting to shake your guys' hand and, and know you more over the next couple years. Um, last but certainly not least, we have some of the players here, all the players that I've coached in my time. Um, thank you so much. Just the whole reason that this is possible. You, you, you look at some of the relationships that you've built with these guys, and the love and support I've got over this three weeks, it's been a tough three weeks. I've, I've learned a lot about myself. Um, and the relationships that you've built with your, uh, my players over the last five years and the support I've received has been so humbling. Um, it puts it in perspective why I wake up every morning and do what I do, why, it's, why you do seven days a week and you come in every morning with the energy he's talking about. It's because of the players. It's the relationships that you build with them. It's the phone calls that you get. It's way more than change-ups and curveballs, guys. It just is. It's about seeing them grow as men, and when you see these guys develop off the field, that's the ultimate reward. Seeing them grow up and become fathers and husbands and doing it the right way with high character and integrity, that's what this whole thing is about. Um, we talk about often with recruits. He was talking about we were bringing in high-level recruits. One of our main lines we say is there's never been a better time to be a paladin. And I'm telling you guys, today I've never felt more certain of that statement. 
there's never been a better time to be a, a paladin than there is today. Um, I'm planning on keeping Taylor Harbin as my hitting coach. He is the local legend. My joke is if you want a really good hamburger and traveler dress, go find the Taylor Harbin statue and it's right to the left. Um, and I will, I will retain Jeff Kimmel as an assistant as well. Um, I will begin the search for the third assistant, probably right when, this, uh, right when this is over and I get done talking with Dan Scott. So we're gonna look for the best candidate that will represent firm in the best way. We have an interesting situation here. This is not a, this is not a, a rebuild of a team. You're looking at a team that finished two games behind first place. We have a strong nucleus coming back. And one of the main things I told him is if someone tells you we're going to win in three or four years, get them out of this chair because we're going to win and we're going to win next year. We have Southern Conference Pitcher of the Year as a sophomore coming back to campus. We have SoCon Freshman of the Year coming back to campus. We have very good players. We're bringing in some of the top recruits that we've ever brought in in Furman history. We're bringing depth into the pitching staff that we haven't had. We're putting premier arms into the bullpen. The things that it takes to be a successful program and do it over a long period is what we're building this on. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, we're going to look to build a faster brand of baseball. I'm really big on pitching and defense. If you look at the successful programs across the country, it's built off pitching and defense. Everybody wants to wear rings, and in tournament play, pitching and defense wins. So we're going to focus our recruiting on getting the high-end arms that we need to win this conference and add a lot more rings to our jewelry box. We're going to continue to recruit top-notch student athletes. Our kids are going to graduate. They're going to graduate on time. We're going to continue the tradition of having the top student athletes in the country. This program that I'll lead will be motivated. It'll be very goal-driven. And most of all, we're going to come out every single day with the expectation of winning. It doesn't matter if it's the first game of the year, the middle of the, uh, middle of the week when it's cold and you're going somewhere that's got three fans, we're expecting to win every single time we step on the field, and that's the expectation and the level that we're going to set with our players. If I could put it in the three words to keep it really simple, my three words are why not Furman? Why not? We've seen some special things here of another school in South Carolina here recently. The bar has been set high. I like when expectations are lofty. I love big goals. If you're not shooting big, why, why are we doing this? I cannot be more excited about the direction we're heading both in the short term and the long term. And I just, the direction that Furman University baseball team is going in, I could not be more excited about. In the famous words of our biggest Furman fan, my three-year-old Emma Harker, go Paladins, go Furman. Thank you, guys. Well, we are live here in the presidential suite of the football press box at Furman University where just a few moments ago the press conference wrapped up announcing Furman's new baseball coach, the 25th coach in school history, but only the fourth in the last half century. Brett Harker was named the new coach today officially by head coach Mike Buddy. I, by Athletic Director Mike Buddy, I'm Dan Scott, and this is the man of the hour, Brett Harker. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Dan. What an exciting time and a uh, pleasure to be with you. You know, I, I found out on some bus trips this year that I have to kind of educate you on anything that happened prior to 1984 sometimes. <laughs> that is true. 
59 years ago today, a chance meeting between two teenage musicians led to the formation of the greatest rock band in the world. John Lennon and Paul McCartney met 59 years ago today. Today, Brett Harker, you meet opportunity in, in your first head coaching position. Tell me what the last three weeks have been like for you. I tell you what, it has been uh, learning about yourself, that's for sure. It's been a tough situation. Um, you learn to just stay focused. Um, you learn who your friends are. You see all the love and support that you get. And it has just been, I feel like I've grown a lot in the last three weeks. And then you have a, a moment like I just had, a surreal moment. The boy from Greenville stands in front of the city and, and is announced as the next head baseball coach at Furman, and it's all worth it. Winning the press conference is one thing, which you did. Uh, and now the work begins. You're going to be charged with winning baseball games. And to do that, you've got to go out and recruit players. And you've got to recruit the kind of players that – can represent Furman in the classroom as, as well as on the field. Um, but if the two-year history you have here tells us anything, it's something you'll be able to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, if, uh, if I won the press conference, then I'm set to go because baseball is what I've done my whole life. It's in my DNA. Um, that's not the part I'm worried about. The press conference is over. So now I get to get back to doing what I do best. and. That's being out on the diamond and loving on these players and, and going out recruiting and finding the best student athletes in the country that are going to represent Furman and, uh, and take us to the next level on the, on the diamond. I, I got to ask you, I asked you about the three weeks, what the last three weeks has been like. I want to kind of even break it down a little further. You, you interviewed last week and you had about seven days between your interview and being informed you were the head coach. How'd that week go for you? <laughs> Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, the, the good part was we were very busy. We had a camp, and then we had the Worldwood Bat uh, Tournament down in Atlanta that kept my mind busy. But uh, that was probably the least amount of sleep I've ever had combined in an entire week, I'll tell you that much. I think I've lost about 10 pounds, too. I'm not quite taking in the calories I normally take in. Welcome to head coaching life, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So what's the first order of business now that – ceremony will be over you'll meet with the media here and and then it'll be time to get to work what's the first order of business yeah, absolutely first first and foremost is recruiting our current players calling them all um, people don't realize with a 35 man roster when you say you're going to call the team that's a two-day process every conversation is about 30 minutes there's only so many 30 minutes in the day so calling them letting us know letting them know everything's all right um, that uh, we're ready to build and, and we're just excited about the way we're going and, and just keep them in check and, and, and make sure that they're doing the right thing so we can win a, uh, win a SOCON championship next year. You said something very interesting when you were at the podium a moment ago, and that is if anybody told Mike Buddy or anybody else that we're going to win in three or four years, get them out of here because this program is ready to win right now. Yeah, you look at the depth that we have um, in the lineup. We've never had that before. We have premier arms, and we're only getting better on the mound. I can promise you that. We've been able to sign some really big arms, and the, the beauty of that is now you don't just have a couple good starters. Now you have the ability to throw some uh, premier arms at the back end of the bullpen, shorten the game up, which is what we were so successful at doing at the College of Charleston. Now you tell your team, hey, go win the first six innings. You got the boys coming in in relief. Now all of a sudden you got a recipe for winning a lot of baseball games. All the players that were signed obviously had been signed before the coaching change. Confident that they will all maintain their commitment and be here? 1,000% confident in that. Yeah, they were all pulling for me. And uh, the 750 text messages, that's a real number that I've received since 9 a.m., uh, solidify that statement. Are you ready for the uh, second guessing you'll get from your radio announcer and other members of the media now that comes with being a head coach? Listen, I'll tell you right now, I grew up in, in Greenville with a, with, a, with a Puerto Rican large family. I've been second guessed my whole life. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm ready for this challenge. You, you mentioned you're going to obviously keep Taylor Harbin on. Uh, and, and how will the rest of the coaching staff shake out? Jeff Kimmel is like an assistant from Coppin State. He started as our volunteer assistant about three weeks ago. Um, we'll interview him, but look to keep him in the volunteer spot. And then we're going to look to hire our next assistant. Um, uh, going back and forth between hiring a, an assistant 
for pitching to help me out with pitching or possibly um, an assistant that would help with catching as well. Your plans are to remain the pitching coach to go along with your head coaching duties? They are. I, I will say that I've gotten a lot of advice from uh, pitching coaches that are head coaches that say it, it, it helps to have someone that can help you out. So I will still remain in charge of the day-to-day, -day, the big stuff, but it would be nice to have somebody that can, that can help me out on some of the smaller stuff. Did Emma get her camera time? I, I think I, I tried to give her a shout out, so hopefully yeah. that, was a, that was a big deal. She's got that new purple dress on. We've got to show it off. <laughs> she runs the house, doesn't she? Oh, she runs the house. She's got a vocabulary much larger than mine, so she wins. Fantastic. Brad, I know there are a lot of people here who want to talk to you and congratulate you, so we'll let you get to them, but looking forward to working with you on a daily basis. Dan, I, I would want nothing more. Thank you so much. There you go. That's Brad Harker live here at the Presidential Suite at the Pierce Horton Center, and we'll send it back to Caleb to do what Caleb does.